in the last presentation i had discussed the basic aspects related to nature of economics now i'll be taking some other aspects related with the nature of economics nature and scope of economics we have learned till now as to what is the crux of the matter in economics and that is choice making but since this subject began since this subject came into being this choice making was not the central issue modern economics is said to have started with adam smith when he wrote his book an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nations this book was published in the year 1776 and it is said that this point onwards economics came to be recognized as a subject as the name of the book suggests that it is centered on wealth an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nations so wealth was the prime focus of the studies of economics i mean i am trying to give you the journey of economics over the period of time even before uh, adam smith certain studies in economics were made like in india the famous uh, scholar guru chanakya had written a book its title was arthashastra that book directly has this title of arthashastra that is economics but it was a book on political economy on state administration though it also deals with many aspects of fiscal administration financial uh, revenue administration all those aspects are dealt with in that book but it is not a part of modern economics so modern economics is said to have started with the path breaking book of uh, adam smith adam smith advocated free enterprise he advocated the policy of less is fair free enterprise less is fair means least govern governance least intervention of the government and let the market forces manage the affairs these ma this management of market forces is known as the invisible hand like market is a force which regulates itself with the help of the two forces of demand and supply private property profit all this is a part of the concept given by adam smith so economics came to be recognized as a subject which deals with wealth we deals with profit we deals with private property so this was the beginning of the economics and this is how people started understanding economics many economics of that period they supported adam smith's view and major names in this group are david ricardo j b say f a walker these economists and even t r malthus they are known as the classical economists and this was the beginning of the subject then slowly and gradually the time moved on and in 1890 alfred marshall came up with his book its title was principles of economics please do remember every subject has got a journey in the beginning the thought is given in one form and over the period of time this thought goes on improvising and those who succeed they give some better ideas and the subject gets better recognized better organized so alfred marshall he defined economics with an angle of welfare he said political economy or economics is the study of mankind in the ordinary business of life it examines that part of individual and social action 
which is most closely connected with the attainment and with the uses of material requisites of well being it's rather a lengthy sentence but if i if i cut it into pieces it becomes very easy to understand what does malthus marshall says economics is the study of mankind that means as i said earlier uh, individual behavior behavior of people that is studied in economics this is what marshall says the second thing what he says is in the ordinary business of life meaning thereby whatever one does to consume whatever one does to consume and whatever one does by creating a demand the producer follows by producing the items required for that purpose so this is the ordinary business of life that means consumption production distribution these these are the ordinary business of life then it examines that part of individual and social action which is most closely connected with the attainment and with the uses of material requisites of well being now then he says that this subject examines the action of the individual and the action of the society and this action is closely connected with the attainment that is how to get these resources and with the uses of material requisites of well being what are these material requisites of well being these are same land labor capital these are the material requisites and ultimate purpose is well being because all these are demanded for well being so this is the definition of marshall what marshall says is a landmark statement no two opinions about it but then many people raise many kind of kinds of questions about marshall's portrayal of economics the way he puts it it is known as the economics of welfare welfare oriented subject and it is said that this presentation of economics leads to creation of many classes uh, so it is classificatory it talks about well being so people say that it talks about what it ought to be rather what it is in other words economics is a positive science it studies what it is and not a normative science like what it ought to be and to them marshall appears to talk about the normative situation of well being so these are some of the objections raised by uh, the people of that time uh, even today people put it this way but my thinking is totally different i find that this is the growth of a subject initially when adam smith said it's a subject concerned with wealth that was one idea at that particular point of time then over the period of time some thinking enlarged and marshall felt that all this economic activity this ordinary business of life is aimed at the welfare of the people the happiness of the people and even today this concept of welfare has not been done away with it's it's already there you cannot say that welfare has been thrown off economics has become a purely a positive science it has nothing to do with the welfare of the people and there the state comes and intervenes because welfare is again a very important concept so how should you take it then my my suggestion to you would be that you should take it as the growth of the subject over the period of time and in this process there may be certain aspects which may not be so logical today but they were logical at that point of time to create an understanding of the subject so the first landmark idea was given by adam smith and his idea of invisible hand his idea of private property his idea of profit is relevant even today we have not done away with it one may criticize it to any extent so what is the use of such criticism take what is useful in that idea and proceed on to next 
and take what is useful in the next idea and then ultimately you arrive at a definition wherein you have almost everything. So the first one was the wealth centered idea. The second one was the welfare centered idea and the third one and very important uh, idea was given by Lionel Robbins in 1931. Uh, Robbins directly termed economics as a science and he talked about the ends, the means that is the resources, the alternative uses and the choice making. So he has been very concise in defining economics. Perhaps this is a landmark uh, thought which evolves with Professor Lionel Robbins. So what he says is economics is the science which studies human behavior and the relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. So now economics has been defined in a, in a wonderful manner. It has nothing to do with anything else, either wealth or welfare. It's a technique, it's a process. And in this process, the important thing is that human behavior has to be studied in relation to means which are limited, scarce, which have alternative uses and there are ends. Ends are the wants which are to be fulfilled and these wants are to be fulfilled with the scarce means. The scarce means are again characterized by alternative uses. So this was a landmark definition given by Lionel Robbins. And with this definition, economics got a shape. And to date, this central idea is being followed uh, by every analyst. Everybody is convinced that this is the central theme of economics. This is the central nature of economics. If, if you talk about the nature of economics, then it, it originates over here. Of course, the other studies are not irrelevant. They are not less important. They are also equally important because they gave, paved the way for this one to come up with the exact uh, definition of economics. But people who followed Robbins, they said that so many things are not included like growth, dynamism, uh, resources will increase over the period of time. So this dynamic nature has not been taken care of. Full employment has not been taken into, uh, taken into consideration. Services have not been taken into uh, consideration. Distribution, social concern, environmental concern. All these aspects are left out. Paul Samuelson is another landmark uh, in this respect. And he includes some more aspects in his presentation of economics. But my idea over here was to apprise you about the nature of economics over the period of time. 1776, the subject establishes with Adam Smith. Then uh, many other economists of that period, they also joined hands with Adam Smith's idea. Then comes uh, Alfred Marshall, 1890 with his principles of economics. And then in 1931 comes Professor Lionel Robbins and he gives a definite shape to the subject matter of economics. So what economics is all about can be known better by knowing these definitions of economics. And I call this growth of economics as a discipline. Now one very important aspect needs to be studied at this point only the economy and its basic problems. In an economy there are many economic agents which act like individuals are there, households are there, firms are there, they operate. 
their functions are independent as well as interdependent so whatever action is taken by a firm it is independent but it is interdependent also like for example the firm has to produce this production function of the firm is independent but it is dependent on the demand if the demand is not there the firm will not produce if the demand is less the firm will produce less if the demand is more the production will be also be more so this action these actions are actually independent as well as interdependent and the whole economy is a social organism through which people make their living in this organism there are individuals there are household there are firms there are banks there are transporters there are wholesalers there are retailers and there is government so all these have a role to play in the economy what do individuals and households do individuals and households supply land labor capital and skills because this capital is with the households this capital is with the individuals the skills are with the individuals the skills are in the households similarly land similarly capital this is all available over there and the government what does it do it provides an environment a suitable environment in which all these transactions can take place so all these parties have got a role to play now for example individuals and households have provided land labor capital to the firms with the help of this land labor and capital the firms will produce so many things now whatever is the reward of production through these agents of production which are better known as the factors of production out of the income the sale proceeds share of land is given to land share of capital is given to capital share of labor is given to labor there are technical names for these shares land gets rent labor gets wages capital gets interest and the entrepreneur who has started the business who has combined all these resources will get the remainder that is the profit though the concept of profit is a technical one and similarly the other concepts are also very technical but for a for a primary understanding we may put it this way that individuals and households provide land labor capital to the firms these firms do the production and then reward is given to the factors of production and whatever reward have been received by these factors of production that is the income of those factors of production with that income they purchase the goods manufactured by the firms produced by the firms and the entire environment is managed by the government and for this purpose the government collects taxes government provides support to particular production to particular industries to particular businesses and government tries to curb certain businesses certain industries so this is the role of the government and if you look at the role of the other providers bankers insurers wholesalers and retailers they help the chain of distribution and since they help the chain of distribution they also become an important player in the entire cycle of social organism of the economy this is how the economy works and this is how the economy keeps on operating so and normally whatever is demanded that is produced and the cycle goes on this is as i told a little earlier this is known as the invisible hand as referred to by adam smith but then every time the market mechanism may not be correct 
so the government has to intervene as to what should be produced how much should be produced how it should be produced funds decide but yes the government also creates an environment uh, in which these decisions are influenced thus the economic activities of different participants in the economy in the social organism of business are dependent as well as interdependent and level of intervention of the government decides the format of the uh, business in a country like if the government has the total control of business it's known as capital it's known as socialist economy if the government has no intervention or least intervention and lets the market forces do its work then it is the capitalist economy but if the government is somewhere in between the two that is on one hand the private sector is allowed to have its play the forces of demand and supply are allowed to have its play and on the other the uh, government puts some restrictions also when the both these coexist this is known as mixed economy so if there is no control of the government or least control of the government this is capitalism when there is total control of the government and least play of the market forces then it is socialism and when both have a role to play then it is known as mixed economy so mixed, mixed in mixed economy government also has a role to play but yes uh, somewhere it has been seen in the past that the governments have been doing business to my mind job of the government is not to do business job of the government is to govern government should facilitate business government should facilitate the environment in a country government should not directly start manufacturing goods or services wherever it is really very essential where the private sector doesn't come into being they don't want to produce and it is required for social production it is required for certain sections of society there the government may intervene and it must intervene but not everywhere so these are the three types of economic systems prevalent in the world one is the capitalist block capitalist economy wherein governments have no role or very little role then there is socialist economy these days in the world there are very few countries which have got the socialistic pattern of economy because even politically they may be communists they may be socialists but when it comes to business they are not when it comes to business they are a capitalist economy but then from the political angle they are a socialist economy they are a capitalist economy and there is a pattern of mixed economy many economies follow this pattern of mixed economy wherein government also uh, takes care of certain important functions like defense production like so many important things but now defense production is also being given to private sector and private sector has its role to play in defense production so this is this is the economy's working basic working of the entire economy now what is this basic working there are resources of production land labor capital these are the resources of production and there is one person one firm one company which has got the entrepreneurship so those who provide land labor capital they get the reward with that reward which is the income of these factors of production they buy the goods manufactured by these firms and the government provides the environment and the level playing field to all the business units this is the working of economy now another important aspect is basic problems of an economy the problems of an economy are of two types one is efficiency in production and distribution how to achieve efficiency in production and how to achieve efficiency in distribution this is a problem of 
microeconomics. There is yet another problem achieving full employment, growth, output and stability. So full employment, output, growth and stability, these, these problems are the problems which are studies in macroeconomics. At this point itself, let me explain to you what is micro and what is macro. The study of smaller units is known as micro, like the study of a firm. The study of a firm is a micro study. The study of an industry is a macro study. When we study full employment, when we study growth, all these aspects are go into the area of macroeconomics. So, in microeconomics, the issues which are important are achieving efficiency in production and distribution. How to achieve efficiency in production as well as in distribution. We will discuss that in the next presentation and uh, in that presentation, I will tell you as to how the issues related to uh, what has to be produced, how much has to be produced, what has the production, what should be the ideal production mix, how to produce and for whom to produce. So all these aspects we shall be discussing in the next one. Thank you very much.